All right, let me share my screen. Uh, can you guys see my screen now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. I just want to make sure I can never uh, see. Let me hide some things here so you can see the screen. Um, what I typically do when I when I upload a new project, uh, it always goes here. So you can always look at the bottom here and you can see just ignore this stuff. I don't know why it adds that, but each time I log in and add another project, it adds this. So just disregard that. Um, you guys, if you want to save these, you want to just go ahead and cut and paste these uh, and save them in a document. So if you want to use them later. Uh, but this project, um, well, let me show you something else as well. Um, I just noticed that there were some things locked here. So uh, I'm not able to use those, and one was modules. I'm able to go into it, but I don't think you guys can access that. So I think they turn that off. So what you're going to do is just go to uh, discussions, or just the, and um, also I there's some things in files. Uh, this is where I will upload things, uh, but you can see I posted some examples for this project. Uh, and I'll try to get examples for each project uh, so you can kind of look and see how maybe other people are using the same technique. But you can click on this and uh, you just click on each file uh, to look at the image. I tried to find quite a few different examples uh, from different artists using this sort of uh, technique or style. So feel free to always look on files uh, and you can download these too if you like. Um, I just sort of find these on uh, Google search and, and that. So um, you can also access the uh, access uh, the files under assignments. And you can see the, both of those here as well. So uh, let me go ahead and open this project. And um, what we're going to do is a, we're going to do three different collages. Uh, we're going to do a diagonal mashup, a vertical mashup, and a horizontal mashup. Um, this is a really uh, cool project. It's kind of uh, requires a lot of looking. Uh, you're kind of trying to, you know, you're, you're going to try to match things. Um, and I, I can tell you, if you have like a fashion magazine, those have a tendency to work the best, especially for faces, uh, because there's a lot of faces in those magazines. And Typically, they're the same scale. So um, not only this is a cool project, I think, for looking, but it also uh, says a lot about scale, of the scale of things. Um, so, uh, and it says see examples uh, to the right, but you're just going to go to files. And uh, I have those on PowerPoint as well, and I'll show you guys that too. Uh, but first, we'll go over the tools that you'll need scissors. Uh, you can use a razor knife if you like. However, you want to cut out images. Uh, you can use a ruler as well if you, to get a straight edge. Uh, glues, you can use uh, Mod Podge if you like, or a uh, glue stick works fine. You're only going to be using two elements with this. Uh, and I call elements a, something I cut out. Like if I cut out one thing, I, can, I consider that as an element. So uh, two things that you cut out. Uh, will be two elements. Uh, and of course, you're going to need your watercolor paper. Uh, you can use whatever substrate you want. Uh, if you have a lot of heavy cardboard, you uh, feel free to use that as well. But one thing that you want to do with this project is make sure that the, uh, the substrate is square. It's a little easier to manage because uh, the height is equal to the width. So it's a little easier finding images as opposed to using something that's like five by seven or something like that. Uh, so uh, it's a little less challenging. Uh, so you guys are going to do three different ones and I'll show you here when I switch screens. So um, you're just going to look for uh, imagery that somehow matches up. Um, what I like to do is take one image and then try to match that image with other stuff in the magazine. 
if you're sort of going back and forth, it can get really frustrating trying to match something up. So I usually cut up three or four different images and then I start looking. Uh, and then I just take that piece of paper and, and sort of hold it up to other things that I find in the magazine. Um, that is the hint um, uh, to help uh, find the image a little bit better. Um, and like I say, we're only using two elements uh, the uh, and that. So uh, data artist, uh, and when we noticed on uh, PowerPoint uh, that I played on Saturday, uh, a lot of the data artists use this technique. It's, it's sort of a, there's a bit of uncanniness about how something lines up and, and that. So, uh, but I also, um, I put a link on here as well. Uh, and this should be S-T-E-Z-A-K-E-R. I'll change that. Uh, but here's a link and it tells you a little bit about the artist and, and that. So, um, that's everything I have on um, on Canvas. So what I'm going to do now is open the PowerPoint. I found some of these images that I thought mesh together really yeah. well. Great. So um, and it's you'd be amazed how well I mean, I've done this project in the past, and I mean some people find just awesome images, and they are almost meant to be paired together um, in some cases. So. Um, let me find my, um, slideshow. Yeah, I can't remember the name of, uh, this artist. Um, I, I've had these images for quite some time and I didn't actually type the artist name on the, um, on the file, but you can see, uh, it, it, the key, I guess, to being successful with this uh, project is finding points that match up. So in this case, it was a circle matched up. And not only the circle, but the person's feet. I think this is a Robert uh, Maplethorpe photograph. And this is uh, a Greek, some sort of Greek um, image. So it's amazing how they matched up so well. And, and yet they're just from different time periods. Um, here's another one that uses circles. I find circles work really well uh, to do. And again, another uh, a painting. Art magazines are probably good to use. Uh, you can sort of merge something that's painted uh, with something that's real. Um, but here, um, it's not the super greatest one, but the circle, uh, they, I think they actually just cut the circle out to match the circle inside. Uh, another cool one, uh, landscapes work really well because there's horizontals. Uh, a, a lot so and those are easy to easy to match up with one another but if you notice all of these are square a little easier a little easier to match up uh, this is a pretty good one two artists I think this is Marcel Duchamp this is a performance artist I uh, can't remember her last name she's pretty popular um, and um, uh, I can't remember but it's kind of, I think it's kind of cool because one's color and one's black and white so you can actually see that they're not, it's not one image, it's two separate. I need another landscape that matches up pretty well. This is a diagonal. So you guys are going to do three different ones, a diagonal uh, and a, a vertical and also a horizontal. I don't really cut the size out to start. I just tear the page out. Uh, and then when I find a match, then I determine what size square I'm going to use. Six by six works well. Uh, if you go below that, it gets kind of hard unless you, um, you're you finding smaller images, I think. Uh, but you could use four by four, six by six, seven by seven. I think anything below four by four is gonna be kind of small. This is a really good matchup. This is a uh, painting by um, Edward Manet, Manet. Um, and, and this is a, perfect matchup. His arms matched up here um, and also the coat here matched up as well. So th this is a pretty pretty good one I think. It's one that's a little bit more abstract but still it matches up. You know you got your rectangle there that matches up really well. Here's another one. Just the perspective in itself it was a good find uh, that both of them are sort of 
one is looking up and one is looking out. Uh, but I like that sort of shift between uh, looking in two different directions. And here's the, uh, the other guy, John, um, that I showed uh, the other day. And I left a link. He mostly uses uh, figures, uh, portraits. And I think what he's doing is these are actually photographs that he's probably found and bought. So he has a collection. And of course, with photographs, the scale of the placement of, of the image on, on the uh, photographer is going to be about the same. So you're viewing them from the same distance. So, um, you know, finding portraits like Owen Mills portraits, they typically the, the space, uh, the camera is the same distance away from the face. So it makes it a little easier to match these up. And they can become very uncanny because of how close they are. Um, I, I had a student a couple of years ago in printmaking, uh, and we did a project, and it was called The Uncanny. And she uh, had some photographs of herself when she was like four years old. And then she had photographs that she took recently. So it was amazing that she was able to find these two images, and they would match up perfectly. And it was kind of uncanny that there was like, uh, you know, 15 years, 20 years apart. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Um, and this, this of course, is a, a vertical, a vertical mashup. And then back to the diagonals. So let me escape out of here. And I'll switch to I've got, uh, now I'm back to, so what I find is I just have a few magazines here and I just start looking through the magazines and I try to find an image that I might be able to match pretty well. Um, you know, here's something that has vertical and horizontal lines. So this might be something that I could tear out and I don't really cut anything out, I just tear it. So I'm not too concerned with the size yet. Uh, but I'm just going to look through this and try to find things. A landscape's worked pretty well. Here would be something uh, that might work well because there's there's um, horizontals in it as well. So uh, and it would be a little easier to, to mash up. Art magazines work pretty well. Uh, you know, it's kind of cool that you could take uh, an image, uh, maybe a painting, uh, and then uh, like we saw in the PowerPoint, and then just try to find a match for that. Not a whole lot of people in here, but I mean, this might be something that I could use. Uh, See, so you, you just kind of want to look at uh, look at different things. So what I've done here, uh, I like to cut the verticals out. Here's a diagonal. I thought maybe that one might be a good one to use. It's a face. You know, if I could have uh, go through a magazine and try to place this uh, against another page to find one. Um, here is a um, I, I want to use this as a vertical. Uh, so I cut here uh, the, and it has horizontals going across. So this might be pretty good to match up these lines here. Um, you could also, instead of cutting, cutting the image, you could actually just fold it. Um, and then see, you could play around with this and, and use it for quarters. See, I might be able to find something that would match that, or I might be able to find something that matches the bottom part. Or, um, and I can match something on the top as well. So folding it is a really good idea because you have different options. And then what I do is I go through the magazines and let's just say I'm gonna start with this one. And uh, like I say, I haven't cut out uh, the substrate yet, uh, but like I say, you wanna make sure that it's square. And then once I find a match, I can determine whether, you know, I'm gonna make this this is four inches by four inches, or whether I'm going to make it a, lo a lot larger. So, um, you know, usually with collage, the scale of something or the size of the collage is really dictated by the material that you're using. In this case, we're using magazines. So, you know, the image is not going to be super large. Uh, it would be really hard to make uh, a, a collage that was, you know, maybe 14 by 18 because the scale of the imagery here doesn't really dictate that. So, and what I've done is I've, 
I found some things that I think, since this is landscapes, I found some things that might be able to match up. So I want to play with um, where I'm where I'm putting the image and how that fits with uh, the overall image. So I could probably match something up like this. It starts to match. You can see it's starting to match here and here. Uh, even though that's two different photographs and I can see something far away here, this is a bit closer. So this would be a good a mashup. Like you see, it, ma it matches at the point here and it matches at the point here. Um, the color's about the same. I could keep looking. Um, and of course, if I decided, uh, if I found one, I could just tear that out. And I could just put that to the side and keep looking. I might find a better match. Uh, there's one on the other side. So I'm wondering, you know, I probably can't find a match here as, as easily as I did the last one. Um, and you're just gonna keep looking at things. And it's always good just to hold this up to, to here's another match. Uh, this didn't match so well. It was pretty close, but it matched really good down here at the bottom. So it's almost like he, he's on this cliff here. So I, I would probably tear that one out too. Uh, and then when you get, you know, three or four, you'll play with them and try to pick your, the, the best one that you think uh, is the best mashup. I kind of like this one. Uh, I think this one's pretty, pretty good. Only if it matched up here, it would be great. But it does match up at the rocks, and it almost looks like this was actually a real photograph from him standing on the rock looking out. Uh, and then you're going to, uh, this would be my vertical mashup, uh, because it's straight up and down. I typically try to keep the straight line. Um, you don't want to start cutting in and out, although you can. Uh, but I think for this project, just, base, just rely on straight edges. Uh, it's it's going to work a little easier. Some people, like, you know, I could, if I wanted to, I could cut this out here around this guy, and then the top would match better. So, but I would just keep the edges um, straight on both of them. And then I take another image, and this is my diagonal image. Probably not going to find too much in here because the, there's not a whole lot of, of uh, faces in here. Um, I would um, try to look at for some more National Geographics to match this up. I find the diagonal ones are a little harder, uh, harder to find. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be um, a face on the other side. It could be anything that you can match up. Like, again, the key is matching up these points, these edges. Um, and you could just start playing with that. Uh, you might be able to merge a, a human face with an animal face. Um, those always make pretty good mashups um, and, and so forth. So I would just keep looking through the magazines. Of course, if I couldn't find one for this, I would just probably discard it and then try to find another image to use. So um, this just allows a lot of options. And, um, you know, you could lay all these out as well. And um, if you did find something that was the same scale as this, then you could uh, use all three at once while you're looking through the magazine. Um, and like I say, the more magazines you have, the more the easier it becomes. Uh, but a couple magazines will work. You just have to keep looking uh, at the different ways. Uh, you know, I may instead of you know instead of me turning the image this way. I could do it the opposite way too and see if something matches up. Um, so I could start playing around with the image, not only um, looking at it vertically, but also horizontally and try, try to match things up. So don't feel, and even upside down, uh, kind of could make it a bit more uncanny as well if it were upside down. Start to get a bit more surreal, like that would match up kind of. So you could just play around with uh, different approaches to doing that. And you got in, they can be different sizes if you want. Um, um, but just make sure that they're all square uh, when you're, uh, when you're creating them. Um, this might be the easiest thing to use glue wise. It's just simple to glue this on. It's really quick. You don't have to worry about wrinkling. 
But then again, if you're using a Mod Podge or a PVA glue, you want to make sure that you have a roller uh, because these will curl pretty easily. Um, if 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 I'm using if if you guys are using uh, if you're using Mod Podge, what happens is when I gl put glue on this paper, um, all of a sudden the paper uh, moisture is introduced to the paper, so naturally it's going to curl up. But if what I found is if I glue something uh, with the glue and I and I wait a minute or so. So I would hold this down and I, I would put glue on it with a brush. And of course, naturally it's gonna start wanting to curl because it's wet. But what I found is if I can hold this for about a minute or so, once, once the moisture is, um, is embedded in the paper, it will actually flatten out. So if you, um, you know, if you wait about a minute or so, it's easier to manage when you're trying to glue it on. And it's not gonna wrinkle as much either. And then, uh, then of course, I, I just make sure I'm rolling and rolling and rolling. And uh, like I showed the last time, um, you know, you can go outside the edge, which is say I, I wanted to use this four by four. I could just glue the entire sheet on and then I could just trim this around the edge. That way I get a really nice clean edge uh, around the substrate. So it's, it's a little easier probably cutting this after I've already glued it on to the substrate as opposed to me trying to get a straight line and matching it up with the edge. And then I, I, I would just um, put on the other piece after that. But it's, it's also good uh, to use a ruler if you want. I like using a heavier uh, razor knife. Uh, utility knives work really well. Uh, that's for cutting like carpet or whatever. Um, those work pretty well when you're cutting straight lines or bigger sheets. I think it's a little easier to manage than say using something like uh, a small exacto knife, like one of these. A little harder to use to cut a straight edge because it just has such a fine point. So, but that's the challenge today is to find three uh, a vertical, horizontal, and uh, also a um, horizontal and a diagonal. Um, does anyone have any questions? Um, later, um, uh, in a later project, I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna do something where we're using a dry glue, uh, and that works perfect for, for that would work perfect for this project. Uh, we're just using acrylic uh, varnish, um, and we're letting that dry, and then we're using iron. So um, does anyone already have uh, acrylic varnish used for acrylic paint? Uh, they sell in small containers. Um, that's probably what I would recommend using. Um, but it's okay if you don't have it. Uh, at least you'll know how, how to do the project. It just makes it a little easier when you're uh, gluing things. Uh, what I typically do is I, I brush the varnish medium on all my elements. I, I brush them on both sides and I let, the, let them dry. And what happens is after it's dry, I usually put all, all the images inside of a box or whatever. But this is a really good, uh, this is a really good project if you wanna work with kids. Uh, and especially if you're working really large, because after you coat both sides of the paper with the varnish, acrylic varnish, it's typically used uh, to add to paint to make the paint glossy, or it's used as a final coat over top of the painting to make it glossy and also as a protectant. But what it is, it's, it's, it's like a plastic. So what you do after you coat uh, both sides, um, you can take a piece of wax paper and you can start laying all of your glued pieces together on your substrate. And of course you have to coat your substrate as well. And then when you arrange these, you put your, uh, you put your uh, wax paper on top and then, and then use an iron. And what happens is it melts that uh, varnish and they all adhere together. Get a really super, super flat image. You don't have to worry about anything curling. Uh, but anyway, we'll talk more about that uh, later when I introduce that project um, to the workshop. Um, 
Does anyone have any questions? Nope. It, it's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let me switch screens again, and I'm going to show you if you want. Um, you know, you could take some photographs, maybe of your workspace. Uh, if you finish uh, a collage, you could post it on uh, discussions, and I'll show you where you can do that here. Let me switch to... Randall, I yeah. posted something uh, this morning, and I'm curious if I did it correctly, and it's there. Did you, did you, which, uh, where did you post it? On Canvas, and replying to your... It said there was a place to reply and send uh, images. Was it? Uh, was it? Uh, it was on the lesson plans at the bottom of the lesson plan. Uh, you could re you could reply, and there was a place to make attachments. Okay. So I don't know if I did it correctly, but I'd like to know. Well, I'll I'll show you where to go to do that. Um, you just go go to discussions, and what we'll try to do is we'll keep. Uh, the project separate. So if you made uh, a couple, one or two five minute collages and you want to post those, um, go open this and uh, can't see what you're doing. You open this and then just click reply. That's what I did. Oh, you did, but I didn't see your image. Um, I sent it twice. One was sent to the five minute collage, which was the second one I sent, and the first one was sent to, to this class discussion because um, I didn't realize I should have said well, it. Here there's on this one there's no image. You can see there's nothing here. So what I, you, I can't see. We I can only see the the work that you just did, the pieces of oh, art. I'm sorry. I haven't switched. Okay, thanks. Aha, here we go. Yep. Did did that switch? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, but what you're going to do, let me go back here again. Um, and what I usually try to do, uh, every day I will send you a link to the next discussion. But if you want to, you can actually just go there um, and you go to uh, discussions. And you'll see, since what, this is project two, you'll see two projects here. This is yes, the where I sent them. And then this will be where you would want to post the, uh, the mashups. But let's just say, let me open this one. Just double click. Uh, you'll see the project. Um, also, you will see a link to the video. So if you want to rewatch the video, you can. These are on YouTube. So it's just, there's a link. And it's uh, typically, um, it puts the, the video here. But for some reason, it didn't do that on this one. Uh, but anyway, you, here's where you are, but you can see that you didn't post an image for some, some reason it didn't can you go click through. On it? Can you click on it and see? Because I definitely posted an image. Well, there's no, there's no, oh, I see. It, it would, it would show up there. Would you look in the other one for today's? Sure. But uh, when you, uh, what you would do is click reply. And I then did. when you click reply, um, you're going to find out where you upload the image here. Uh, it's embed image, um, insert media, um, upload media. So let me, let's look in the other one here. I think it might be a little different on my, on my end here. I'll wait for it to go back and let's look here. We can open it here. Oh, there it is. So let's open that. And, and typically when you do that, um, I can just click open with. Um, you don't necessarily have to click save file. If you do that, it will save it to your computer. I just like to click open with, and it just opens, it opens the, uh, the image so I can view it. Um, my computer's a bit slow, but here's your image. Oh, cool. Is that one of your five minute collages, right? Yeah, that's a five minute collage and, um, but the five minute part uh, was the background. There was no cloud. I had that kind of a pedestal shaped thing in the center, but I ran out of time. So I, I was thinking that there was going to be a bird on there, but I left it for a while. I think that's what you suggested 
uh, you know, just do the five minutes, leave it, move along. And then I, I decided to put the collage image on it. But thank you. I, I mostly, I, I didn't need to discuss mine, but uh, I wanted to make sure that I said it correctly. Oh, good. You did. You just want to make sure that you put it in the right place. Okay. Because this is the I one. gotcha. So it'll be easier. And that way, we're not a bit confused on um, what image goes with, you know, okay. of course, you'll probably know with some uh, mashups. So just try to post all of them on uh, that project page. Okay. I like to look at them and I'll leave comments. Other people can leave comments as well. So uh, when I Whoa. set this up, I set it up so people could comment on other people's work. So if, uh, if you wanted to comment, you just click reply to yours. Oh. And then it would allow me to, my computer's a bit, I had to go to school and get a computer. They gave me a computer at school. This one's incredibly slow, so I can't wait to use it tomorrow. So, see, I could, I could, uh, I could type a comment. <laughs> I'm not the best typer. And then uh, I could also put in another image, but you can see there, these will be connected to you. So every. Um, Every time someone leaves a comment, um, it will connect it. So you'll see this line connected. Now, if someone else leaves a comment, um, so I could put, um, I could leave a separate comment or I could post something, but uh, this is a place to upload So you'll notice now it's it's separate. See how I'm separated between these? So each person can do that. So I think this might be um, a great place to put your images. Um, and then other people can look and see what, what others are doing. I find it really important uh, working in groups because not only do you learn a lot from someone teaching it, you learn a whole lot from your other students that are making it. Um, I know when I, I was in art school, I would always walk around and look at what everyone else is doing to try to get an idea. Uh, but I think that's a really good way to learn is by looking at other people's stuff. So uh, feel free to post uh, your stuff here. Um, and I'll, throughout the day, I'll keep looking. Um, and if someone posts something, I'll comment on it. Uh, a little easier to talk. So I think on Friday, we can do a sort of a show and tell. Uh, it's a little easier to. Uh, or if you put stuff on here, I can actually just click on it and we can all talk uh, while you look. A little easier than typing back and forth. So um, does that make sense uh, on what I did here? Yes. Okay, I'm going to stop uh, and then I'm going to go back. Uh, all right. Uh, anyone else have any more questions? Sure. Uh, feel free to grab this stuff as well. Did someone have a question? I thought I heard a, someone started to say something. Um, I mean, that's all that I have today. Um, also, feel free to send me an email if you have a question. Uh, I'm more than happy to reply. So um, I'm at my computer almost all day long. So uh, I'll definitely get back to you immediately. We have one other person joining us. Uh, he had some issues logging in. Uh, but he should be here tomorrow. So we have one other person. Uh, and, and as always, uh, when we finish with a Zoom meeting, um, it downloads the video. And I'll post the video on the same discussion page as this project. So you guys can watch it again if you want. Great. No questions? No. Nope. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.